Let's do that one first. Notice that this time we have square root of x squared minus 1 on the bottom. Don't do partial fractions because we have the square root, right? But here we can actually do tricks up. And the correct substitution is let x to be secant theta, right? And then you see that this way, dx will give us secant theta tangent theta. And of course, you have the d theta right here. Perfect. Now, go ahead and just plug in everything into the original inter integral. And it depends on how you want to do it. You might want to finish everything in the theta world. And if you want to do that, well, here is x is equal to 2, and here is x is equal to infinity. So you have to just do this one very carefully. And it's up to you, right? It's really up to you to see if you want to work out the trick or not. Uh, I will not do that, actually. Because if you put 2 right here, the first question that you get to ask is that how do I solve secant theta is equal to 2? Likewise, if you put infinity right here, you will ask, like, how do I solve uh, secant theta is equal to infinity, right? It might be better if we just use tricks up, just go to the theta world to finish the integration, and then come back to the x world, and then do everything there. So let's just ignore the numbers right here for now. So with that being said, let's just focus on the integration. Here we have 1 over square root of, and this right here is secant theta, and we have that being squared, and then we have the minus 1. And the dx is all that, so I'll just write down secant theta tangent theta d theta, like so. Alright, what's secant squared theta minus 1? Tangent squared theta, right? So this is just square root of tangent squared theta, and yes, they will cancel, so we have a tangent theta on the bottom. And the best part is this and that will also cancel. In another word, we just have to integrate secant theta. So this right here is the integral of secant theta d theta, which is going to be ln absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. Don't worry about plus c, because we are going to plug in numbers. But we do have to worry about going back to the x world. Again, that's just my recommendation, especially when you are doing the trick substitution. Go back to the x world and then work out the numbers there. Well, we know that secant theta is equal to x. So we can write this as secant theta equals x over 1. And then draw the right triangle. And remember, secant is, well, let's put down the right angle here and then the angle theta. Secant is what? Hypotenuse over adjacent. And the opposite is, you open the square root first, and you do the hypotenuse square minus this side square. And yes, do you see the same radical again? Yeah. All right, so based on this triangle, right, based on this triangle, let's go ahead and figure this out. This is ln absolute value. Secant theta is just going to be x, right? That's the nice one. Good. And then plus tangent theta. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we have just square root of x squared minus 1 over 1. So this over that. So we have this x squared minus 1. All right, so that's actually our uh, answer for that integration. And then we just have to plug in numbers. So let's go ahead. We are going to plug in 2 and then infinity. Well, plug in infinity, here we get natural log of infinity plus square root of infinity squared and then minus 1. So this right here is the first part. And then minus plugging 2 into dx, we have ln absolute value 2 plus square root of 2 squared minus 1, just like that. Again, we don't need the absolute value though because, it, but we can have it, doesn't really matter. And you know what's happening. This is infinity plus, this is infinity minus 1 is still infinity, square root of infinity is still infinity, you can make it wrap with the, <laughs> with the sum of that already, but anyway. Ln infinity is infinity. So the first part here is infinity. Second part is, well, it's a number, it's a finite number, ln of 2 plus square root of 3. So infinity minus that, the infinity unfortunately will overtake that. So this right here diverges. So I'm just going to write it down right here for you guys. All right, we did the hard work already though, because we used the tricks up to get the integration right here. 
So we'll come back here and do the same thing. Now just use that and then put it down and then uh, you know, figure it out. Well, this is ln absolute value of x plus square root of x squared minus 1. And then we have to go from 1 to 2. And here we are going from 1 to 2, but when x is equal to 1, that will give you a vertical asymptote. So the technicality here is 1 plus to 2, right? But anyway though, go ahead and plug in, so you get ln of 2 plus square root of 2 squared minus 1, that's the first part, and then minus ln absolute value 1 plus in there, and then plus square root of 1 plus square, and then minus 1, like so. Right? Okay, the first part, we get ln of, things that's positive, that's why I changed to parentheses. This is 2 plus square root of 3. And then minus, have a look. 1 plus square is still 1 plus. It's like 1, right? And then minus 1 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. In the end, you get ln of 1 plus, which is like ln of 1. So all in all, this right here is just 0. Very nice, huh? So finally, this right here converges, and it converges to ln of 2 plus square root of 3. When we have a finite number, that will be your answer. Yeah, so that's it.